What are the 10 major factors you need to understand before undergoing a residential paint project? Are you considering a residential painting project, but you don't know where to begin? You want to know what to expect? What are you getting yourself into? You want to know what you don't know? Whether you're considering a do-it-yourself project or you want to know more about the possibility of hiring a painting contractor, stay tuned because this video is definitely for you. Hey guys, I'm Steve Braun, owner and founder of Bronze Painting in Camillus, New York, and your host here on Bronze Painting Network. Welcome to the Paint Trainer Series on Bronze Painting Network, where we motivate, train, and entertain for all things residential painting. Let's get right into the top 10 factors you need to consider before getting involved with a residential painting project. Factor number one is what type of painting project are you looking to do? Is it an interior project or is it an exterior project? There are major differences in the types of equipment and procedures that you'll need to undertake to execute those different types of projects. When you're working outside, you need to consider the possibility of weather interruptions, interactions with wildlife, and also increased difficulty in access points or working high up on ladders. When you're working inside, you're going to want to consider things like ventilation, and there's also going to be more substantial job site protection of your belongings inside the home. Factor number two is understanding the types of components and substrates that you're going to be painting. It's not just walls inside the home. You need to also consider if you do paint your walls, should you also be painting the ceilings, the trim, doors or other things possibly like cabinetry, vanities, or other accents within the home. There might be other specialty components that you also need to consider such as window sashes, window mutton bars, stair components, brick fireplaces, or other types of masonry items that might be a part of your home. Keep in mind that different types of substrates such as sheetrock, wood, aluminum, steel, masonry products, all may have varying different types of preparation methods that need to occur or even different application types. Factor number three is understanding the different task pillars in a residential painting job. You're going to need to set up for the project and get your space ready to be a functional work area. You are also going to need job site protection, which is basically covering up the belongings in your work area that can't be removed with some combination of plastic, construction paper, cardboard, or drop cloths. It's also going to be very important to perform proper surface preparation and repair, things such as cleaning and scraping, sanding, patching, caulking, stain blocking, or all the different types of things that you would have to do before you can execute a proper paint job. Then of course is the most well-known one, applying the paint with any combination of brushes, rollers, possibly even spray equipment if you have experience or want to learn how to use a sprayer. And you can't forget about cleanup, not only at the end of the project, but while the project is ongoing and at the end of each day within a project, you want to make sure you're keeping a really clean job site. Fourth factor is understanding that there is a proper order of operations that you want to execute your job in for proper efficiency and quality of your job. Not only do certain tasks need to be done in a certain order, but even the tasks themselves, such as paint application, have a very specific order that you want to follow for best results. Typically, you want to work top down, but there is time for having flexibility within a project so that you can keep busy and make sure that everything is moving along efficiently while you wait for certain products, materials, or paint to dry. Factor number five is understanding some of the safety issues and hazards that could possibly be involved with your project. There can be hazards with some of the materials that you may work with inside your home, such as old paint or plaster or even sheetrock or wallpaper. You also want to realize that some of the materials you use have their own hazards and risk factors that need to be properly considered. You're going to want to also think about what types of personal protective equipment, PPE, could be used on your project to help keep you safe. 
If you're working outside, there can be additional hazards related to climbing ladders and working at heights, so there is potential for falls. You also want to know that sometimes even the weather in wildlife can present dangers while you're working on your own. Factor number six is scheduling and convenience while you're undergoing your project. A lot of painting projects, it will not be possible to complete it without having substantial inconvenience in your home. There are a lot of dry time factors that will prevent projects from being conducted over the course of one day. So you may need to clear out a room and over the course of several days, execute the project before you can move everything back into the home. Also, there can be substantial messes and odors created inside the home. So especially if you have allergies or a chronic condition like asthma, you wanna make sure you really understand what you're getting involved with before you disrupt your home life. Factor number seven is product and material decisions. You will have a lot of decisions to make regarding the type of paint that you're gonna use on the project in terms of the brand that you wanna use, the quality of the paint within that brand, and also the type of color and functionality you want on your paint in terms of washability and durability. And when it comes to color, you really need to understand how different a color can look in varying types of light conditions. It's going to be very important for you to take your time during the color selection process and do sample work throughout the home so you can see your colors in your unique lighting conditions. You'll also need to acquire job site protection materials like construction paper and plastic and preparation materials such as joint compounds, caulk, and painter's putty. Factor number eight is gathering your tools and equipment. Depending on the type of project you need, there will be some things that you absolutely have to have, such as paint brushes and rollers and pans, and other things that you would like to have, such as power tools. The type of ladders you'll need will also greatly depend upon whether you're working inside or outside, or whether or not there are vaulted ceilings or stairs involved inside the home. It is possible for some painting projects to execute it with very low cost and limited equipment. However, there are other types of painting projects where there might need to be substantial investments in either purchasing or renting equipment. It's going to be really important that you thoroughly research what you might need before you undertake your project so there aren't any surprises in your budget. And that leads us to number nine, budget. What could a painting project possibly cost you? Well, again, that will vary wildly depending on the type of project and the type of preparation work that needs to be done. If you're doing the project yourself, you really need to weigh the cost in terms of your time and then the material costs. Keep in mind that even with an experienced painter, a typical bedroom will take a day, possibly longer depending on if all of the components in the room, such as doors and trim or windows, are also being painted. A typical gallon of paint can range anywhere from $50 a gallon up to $100 a gallon for the best paint, and a typical bedroom will take two gallons just for the walls. If you're considering hiring a contractor, now you've got to really consider the cost of labor from the contractor in addition to the materials and other factors like sales tax. In New York State, for example, most residential painting projects are classified as maintenance and we are required to collect sales tax on that work. And that leads us to our last factor, which is hiring a contractor. If you're considering that, you definitely want your due diligence and to take your time and do your research and make sure you get the right contractor for you. One of the biggest recommendations I have is making sure the contractor has visibility online with a website, a lot of online reviews and social media interactions so that you know they are accountable to a reputation online. I would also like to see a contractor that has visibility in the community with a clear address and a clear ability for them to be contacted should you need to in the future. One of the other big suggestions is to make sure that any agreements are in writing and they are very detailed with a clear scope of work and a clear set of customer and contractor expectations and that there is an agreement in place for customer satisfaction and payment. When it comes to labor expenses for a contractor, I recommend thinking of it in terms of man hours and asking for transparency with your contractor on how many man hours do they expect this project to take. 
With the cost of overhead, insurances, and employee compensation, it shouldn't be surprising at all to see contractor labor rates that are in the $50 to $75 an hour range for residential painting, and possibly even more. So there you have it guys, those are the 10 factors that you want to consider before undergoing a residential painting project. If you're interested in learning more about some of these things, I highly recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube page and follow us on social media where we will be covering these topics and many more all year long. Thank you.